Hey guys, my name is Ben Howard. We're back out here at Flat Rock Middle School to check out the back nine out here. Like I said in the first video, there's only nine baskets out here, but each each basket has two tee pads for it, with the shorts being considered the front nine, the longs being considered the back nine. Uh, right now we're on hole 10. It's a par three, 320 feet straight ahead. Uh, pretty far uphill, place closer to like 350. Uh, the best play really is to throw something out to the right, about where these telephone poles are and try to have it filter in towards the basket because the whole fairway slopes from right to left. Uh, biggest mistake you don't want to make is throwing something too high and having it stall out in the baseball field off the left because it's out of bounds and a lot of times the gate's locked so you can't get in there. But uh, also got to pay attention to because a lot of times there's a right to left wind on this hole so you can think you threw a good shot and it just flies way off to the left. But I'm just going to try and throw, throw this at the telephone poles and just get see if I can get a putt. Uh, threw it straight at the basket and I meant to. Sit down. Okay. It looked like it stuck, so I might be I might be inside the circle. Just depend on what kind of ground action I got. It looks like I got a little bit of a skip, filtered a little bit down the hill, but still got a makeable putt. Fade, fade. Oh, dang. Almost. There you go. All right, guys, so on hole two, it's a par three, 501 feet straight ahead. Uh, biggest thing you got to pay attention to in this hole is the road off to the left is out of bounds, and the stuff off to the right isn't out of bounds, but it's pretty much jail if you get off in there. So, really just want to throw this out into the fairway. It plays a little bit shorter than 500 feet, probably close to like 450, but it's still not reachable for me. So I'm just gonna try and throw this chip shot in the fairway and chip up to the basket. That looks really good. Get a nice skip for me. Oh yeah, good forward skip. Ooh, and a good forward roll. The range found it to 150 feet, so just going to try and chip this up under the basket and get out of here with my par. A little short, maybe? No, that's fine. It's in. That's all that matters. All right, so for hole three, we've got a par three, 435 feet. You see it down there on the other side of this uh, swing. Nothing really too dangerous on this hole. You got the OB off to the right, which shouldn't come into play. The baseball field off to the left, which is out of bounds again, which also really shouldn't come into play. I've uh, got a left to right wind. It feels like it's kind of switching from left to right to head, but I'm just going to try and take something over stable, just throw it out there and just try and give myself an easy approach shot to the green. Oh no. Hit the sign. Hit the sign. Is that in there? Yeah, that's in there. So, this is probably the best place to go out of bounds because it leaves you with a pretty, a very manageable upshot. Just gotta put this close and get out of here with my bogey. Ah, too low. Skip a little bit for me. Yeah, there we go. Like I said in the last video, the back nine is where you just hold on and try and get as many pars as you can because you're going to get bogeys back here. We've got some birdieable holes out here, so it's definitely still a good chance for me to get under par, but I just got to play really clean for the rest of the round. All right, so for hole four, it's a par three, 430 feet. Um, you have two gaps on this one, but the, the gap pretty much everybody goes for is this right one. Because the left one, you've got to worry about telephone poles and telephone wires. Not really worth going for it. But best thing is just to try and hit this gap with something that will just give you as much distance as you can get. Just get out there into this open area just through the gap. If you get in there, you can give yourself an easy approach shot up to the green. And with because the basket's on the side of a hill, it gives you a nice backstop to run it. But 
biggest thing I want to do in this tee shot is just get over this bush and just push it as far as I can through that gap. Turn more, turn more. Get through that. Yeah, okay. That's a little too far left for what I wanted, but I'll still have like under 200 feet into the green. So should be an easy up and down for par. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I was talking about under 200 feet. This is probably under 100 feet from the basket. This is by far my best drive ever on this hole. But let's see if I can catch this. Come on now. Give me that spin, give it the height. Ah, oh, dang, didn't fade on me at all. There we go. All right, guys, so we're on hole five. This is a par three, 345 feet. Just dead straight ahead. Um, biggest thing to pay attention to is all tall grass between us and the basket is out of bounds, which takes you to a drop zone off to the left side, which gives you like a 150 foot approach shot. Really don't want to do that because it's very easy to mess that shot up. I've done it so many times. But best play I've really found is throw something high and overstable out to the right. Let it fade over these trees just in front of the basket and just try and have it land left side of the basket. Give yourself like a 60 to 50 footer and just either run it or lay it up and get out of there with a par. It's very easy to mess this hole up, so really just got to be careful on this one. Stay high. Stay high. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that that's might not be as far away as I was talking about. It might be in like 40, 45 foot range, but that's that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to do on this tee shot. 38 feet to the basket, so definitely the best throw I've ever had on this hole. Let's go ahead and knock it in. All right. Ah, dang. Almost. All right, guys, so we're on hole six. This is a par three, 270 feet, just dead straight ahead. Uh, biggest thing you want to worry about in this hole is the OB off to the left, which comes into play a lot more than you think because, of, because you're throwing it so far uphill, it makes anything you're throwing act slightly more overstable. So you really just want to throw disc up a little bit and throw something that's more understable than you normally throw in this type of shot. That looks really good. Sit down right there. That look, yeah, that's that's exactly what I wanted that that shot. That's that should be well inside the circle. Dadgummit. That's been my miss lately for some reason. Just can't get any power on any putts. Ah. All right, guys, so we're on hole seven. It's a par three, 370 feet. Um, it's off, tucked off to the right, about even with this telephone pole. So it's the best play I've really ever found to get to park it would be like a, a backhand roller or some kind of if you've got a massive forehand, you probably could get it there. Uh, I just I just prefer to just throw something out there, give myself an easy approach shot, and just get up and down for a par. Because all this stuff off to the right is just super thick, and you don't want to mess with it at all, really. Because it, it's very easy to lose discs, and it's just full of poison oak back there. Just like that. That's perfect. Sit right there. Yeah. That should give me about 100 to 80 feet to the basket. We'll see. All right, so I range around this at 61 feet. So well within my putting range, just got to give it height. Let it fade right into the basket. <sighs> drop, drop. 
I've been putting those super high lately. I don't know why. I got I got plenty of power on it, just way too high. Ugh. All right, guys. Uh, so I just realized I was saying the na the whole numbers on the T pads or T signs, not the ones that we're playing in the 18 hole layout. So sorry if that got confusing, but now we're on hole 17. It's par four, 600 feet, just straight ahead. Only thing to really worry about is the rough off to the right, which is the worst rough I've ever played in. It is briars past your net, your head. So if you throw something off in there, it's almost you might as well just play it as OB because it's not worth going in there for a disc. And there's a fence up here on top of this hill off to the left. It's a Mando right. So best play you can really do is throw something that's closer to the rough, not off to the right, not very close to it because you if you get yourself too close, you can get kind of get pinched off. But as you can kind of see with the shape of the hill, the farther left you are, the more cut off you can get by this hill. So if you're off to the right side, it gives you a nice clean approach shot into the green, which is what you need on this one because the green is elevated basket on top of a hill. And if you're short at all, that it's like eight to 10 feet tall, depending on where you are on the hill. That thing's turning a lot more on me than it normally does. That's that's a little too far right, but you'll be able to see what I was talking about up there. Just it's so much easier to get to the green from that right side than it is off to the left. Okay, so I'm not really pinched off too much. I'm gonna try just a slight turnover shot or something that'll pan out and push straight for me. Just if anything, you just want to go left. Don't want to go right at all. Oh, wow. I forgot how stable that thing is. Wow. Okay. Geez. I thought he would hold a slight any. Oh, all right. At 61 feet again. If I do the same putt I did on the last hole, it will probably go in. So give it the height, give it the power, and let's get it there. Oh, or just let it slip out of your hand. Give yourself a nice 30 footer. Oof. Dang. There we go. Finally, I made a putt. All right, guys, so on hole 18, final hole of the video. It's a par three, 380 feet, just dead straight ahead. Nothing in the way. Biggest thing you got to pay attention to is the. The ground right in front of us slopes up to about head height from the T-pad. So you've got to throw something a little nose up on this shot. And so throw something a little more understable than you would normally throw. We've also got a nice headwind, which makes this so much more fun. Stay high. Fade for me. Fade, come on. Okay. I think that's almost pin high, but I'm, I think I'm going to have like a, I'm going to be on the side of that hill, so I have like a weird footing and weird putt, but it's a putt. All right, I put this a little bit closer than I thought, but still going to make the putt. Let's get it. Stay high. Oh, dang it. It's so, mm. I think it's also the downhill putts that mess with me. Because I always think I got to aim at the band and let it drop when I don't really need to. Something like that, I can just put it like normal. Ah, that's frustrating. All right, guys, to finish up our round out here at uh, Flat Rock Middle School. Um, this is one of my favorite courses, honestly. Just because we don't really have a lot of open courses in this area. And like this is what I would say is like a, a perfect example of what an open course should be like. Because you, you shouldn't have to really worry too much about hitting gaps in open course. But out here, you've got to focus on your landing. It doesn't matter how you get to the landing zone. You just got to get to the landing zone that you're trying to hit. And like you can tell that on a lot of holes out here that like 
The landing zones are very specific, and there's a lot of danger out here if you're off on your shots at all, as you can see. Because like 17, 17 is one of my favorite holes in gen like in general. But like you can see on that where it's got that slope to it, it just makes it to where you have to land precisely in a certain spot, even though there's not a single tree in the fairway. So it's definitely, definitely a really fun one to check out. And even if you're like, even if this is like a, a far drive for you, it's still worth coming out here because then you've got um, Jackson Park, which is like five minutes from here, which is one of my favorite wooded courses. So it gives you that perfect balance of just like super open bomber course. And then you can go over there and play a really tight wooded course. I'd love to see a tournament where we play both both these courses. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun, but definitely look out for this one if there's any tournaments going on out here because most of them are all fundraisers for the stuff that's going on with the school. So definitely worth checking it out. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, tomorrow, I'm going out to Holston Creek to film my 250 uh, subscriber special. I'm going to be playing the gold layout, trying to beat 18 over out there again. Uh, I'm going to be doing some giveaways in that one. I'll have all the details for it during, in the video, but keep an eye out for that one because that's going to be a fun one to do. And I th thank y'all so much for getting me 250 subscribers. It's crazy that I never really thought I'd get anywhere near that much this fast. So thank y'all so much, but y'all have a good one. Bye.